Steve Logan Show, an inside look at pirate football is brought to you by Sprint, BB&T, Coeco Office Systems, Pepsi, Trademark, PCS Phosphate, McDonald's, Bill Clark Homes, United States Cellular, Winn-Dixie, Chrysler Plymouth, Jeep Eagle, S&K Menswear, Wachovia, the Hilton Inn of Greenville, and by Multimedia Cablevision. Now, here's the voice of the Pirates, Jeff Charles. Welcome to the Steve Logan Show. Uh, what can you say? An incredible week, an incredible performance on Saturday night by the Pirates. It has to go down as one of the all-time great wins in East Carolina Pirate football history. A come-from-behind win over the ninth-ranked team in the country, the Miami Hurricanes, 27-23. to 23, And Steve, you had to be there to witness it, watch it on television, maybe listen to our radio broadcast, but uh, I don't really know where you start with a game like this. Uh, it was just an incredible performance. It, it was. It was a great effort. Um, we didn't play particularly well in the first half. We were turning the ball over. At halftime, I told our players, if you would just not turn the ball over and leave Miami's offense a long field, I don't think they can score any more on us. And I did believe that we could uh, get our passing game uncorked and, uh, and down the field and, and score some points. I felt really good at halftime because we were doing some nice things on offense, but nothing with consistency. Mm -hmm. So it was just a matter of taking care of the football. And Jeff, I'd, I'd like to say that I want to promise all the fans that I'm not going to do any more shows in this sweatsuit. But <laughs> we have just gotten off the bus and uh, we've been situating players and I'm telling you, if we had a mess, we've got a bigger mess now that we're home. So. Uh, we're, kind of, we're still in some extenuating circumstances here. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And everybody understands, uh, I think, what the players and the coaching staff went through this week. And see, that's what makes this whole situation so much more remarkable. You beat the ninth-ranked team in the country with all this adversity. Uh, I mean, it's like out of a storybook or a movie or something. It, it has got some storybook uh, feeling to it. And, and Jeff, I'm going to tell you, uh, Somebody said to me, you know, I think that Miami team that we beat was better than the one we beat in 96, and, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, they were. Yeah, I think uh, so. That was, a, that was a good football team we beat tonight. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, they were so fast, and uh, it took us a while to acclimate to what we were seeing because we had not seen speed like that in the previous three games. We had seen it in spots, but not mm -hmm. as a whole unit. Their, mm -hmm. their running backs and their wide receivers, and, of course, the quarterback, for goodness sakes, we chased him all over the right. stadium, and rarely could we get him down. So... Uh, we beat a good football team tonight. It was a fantastic effort, not only by the players, but I'm going to tell you, Jeff, it was the most humbling thing to see uh, an opposing stadium, uh, a stadium that it's not ours, overflowed. Unreal. With nothing but East Carolina. Because I know that Miami didn't bring more than two or 300 mm -hmm. fans. I saw them sitting in a little mm -hmm. section, and to just the, the stadium was overflowing. Uh, what, a, what a night. Yeah, what, what a night is right. It just blew our minds when we looked out and saw that full... Carter Finley Stadium, 45,902 fans there. It was an incredible sight, an incredible game, and let's uh, roll the video now, our PCS Phosphate first half highlights. What a sight, Steve, 45,902 as we look at the great turnout, and Kenny Kelly uh, gets uh, the Miami Hurricanes off to a good start here as he hits Santana Moss. I tell you, they came out and took the football. They won the toss and took the football, and they took it right down the field and scored, and it reminded me of the 96 game when they did the same thing. And then Reggie Wayne uh, catches the pass, and all of a sudden it's 7 to nothing Miami. Well, it, it, that's the way it started. I told our players that that could very well happen, and we needed to just hang tough and not panic. Pirates get the ground game going, and also through the air we see uh, Jamie Wilson catching this pass. You'll see here in the first half, half Jeff, that we, uh, you know, we moved the football. We got first downs on almost every possession, but we never put anything together consistently. Pirate drive stalls. Uh, Miami's drive also stalls, and the Pirates get the ball back, and we see uh, Gerard again uh, hit Chapel here for a 14-yard gain. I was glad to see Lamont really got cranked up. I think he ended the game with eight catches. But then Andrew Bays has this one blocked. Well, we had a uh, misfire on the punt team. We, we've got a lot of work to do on the punt team. We're not a very good punt team right now. We should be really good because Andrew Bay is a great punter. And then, Steve, uh, your defense really does a nice job here, and uh, they hold uh, Miami out of the end zone. They have to settle for a field goal. It was a great job holding them out of the end zone. Anytime you have a, a sudden change and the defense holds them to a field goal, that's a victory for the defense. Crossland, though, does get the field goal, and it's 10 to nothing Miami. 
Pirates come back now uh, offensively, and we see uh, Jamie Wilson for a six-yard run. Jamie ran the ball uh, well tonight. He, he really uh, got kind of got back in the groove, didn't do too well over South Carolina, but was running well tonight. We have the drive stalls on fourth and seven, and Andrew Bays, uh, Steve's been such a weapon, a 56-yard punt here. Well, we needed it about that time. Andrew, you know, when you protect him and do our job up front, he can really help our team. The uh, Miami Hurricanes come back with the football with a 10 to nothing lead in the second period, and uh, this is a big play here as Forrest Foster gets the pick. Well, uh, they tried to go over the top, and uh, Forrest saw the takeoff route developing, and he actually uh, looked like it was meant to be thrown to him. He did a great job intercepting it and gets the ball back for us. Unfortunately, the Pirates uh, give it right back here, and uh, the fumble recovered. Well, we had a protection bust up front. We didn't turn the protection the right way, and, uh, you know, David got hit from the blind side. We had a post route that was opening up for a big gain. It was really, really uh, tragic. Miami's drive stalls, 10 nothing. Hurricanes with the lead, and... Uh, David Garrard uh, on the next series has this one intercepted by Popovich. That was a, one of the few bad snaps uh, David took all night long. We had a third and eight and had a deep end cut called, and he came down too quickly off the end cut and took the shallow crossing route. Shouldn't have been thrown there, but uh, he'll rally us back later on. Yeah, it's seven to nothing, uh, 17 to nothing now as uh, Portis rushed uh, for a touchdown earlier in the second period. And, uh, Steve, now we see uh, the Miami Hurricanes with the football. Uh, they drive the ball down the field, and again, they have to settle for a field goal. Well, here again, you know, we, we give our defense a short field. They come out and hold them to a field goal. So uh, we're not out of this thing. We've just got to calm down and put some, put some uh, plays together and go score. Digging a hole down 20 to nothing. And, uh, Steve, your offense would come back here and... Uh, put a nice drive together. We see David Garrard with a pass complete to uh, Marcellus Harris. Well, we hit the wheel route coming out of the backfield and got a big gain. And with that, you know, every time we get what we call an explosion play, it seems to really ignite us. And then we're get on, going to get down the field here and, and get a field goal out of this thing. DeLeo Dodd seemed to grow up in this game, made some big catches for you. He dropped the first big third down early in the game and it was really discouraging. Then he came back and started catching and running with the ball like we know he can. I was really tickled to see that. On a fourth and three, the Pirates will settle for the field goal. Kevin Miller gets it from 38 yards out. Well, there were a lot of emotional people in the in the stands wanting us to go for that, but uh, we had to get points on the board right before halftime, Jim. 20 to 3, our score at halftime. We come back, we'll look at the second half highlights right after this time. Yeah. Welcome back to the Steve Logan Show. Getting ready for the second half. And Steve, we've seen it the last couple of weeks, especially the Duke game, the South Carolina mm -hmm. game. Uh, sometimes I guess maybe we overemphasize adjustments that are made at halftime. Maybe we don't. What, what's been happening at halftime here the last couple of weeks? Well, last night I can tell you uh, exactly what happened defensively. I, I was listening to Coach Rose and what was happening when Miami was running the zone play and stretching our defense and then cutting back behind, mm -hmm. and that's where they were getting all their yards, he slowed the backside safety down mm -hmm. and started fitting, fitting him into that cutback gap. Mm -hmm. And uh, that stopped the running game. Well, once we got that stopped, uh, I, I'm telling you, that young man that's playing for Miami, he's not a great passer, uh, not very accurate. Great athlete, yeah. but uh, he can't throw the ball like David or Richard or Bobby Weaver. He, he just can't. So we really, that really put some crimps in what they were trying to get done once we stopped the running. And a great adjustment by Coach Rose. Offensively, we, we did uh, talk to the kids. We, we had to throw the football. We're going to throw the football uh, almost exclusively. So we've got to throw and catch the ball consistently. And really, that's all there was to the offensive side. Just go do it. And we begin for the first time this year to orchestrate what I call orchestrate in the passing game. I saw some kids breaking off routes that uh, were instinctive. I saw David putting the ball instinctively where we really don't coach it to go. Mm -hmm. And when those things begin to happen, that's when the East Carolina passing game looks like you want it to look. Mm -hmm. Well, seeing is believing. Uh, if you were at the stadium or watched the game, listened to it on the radio, maybe you didn't believe what was happening, but we've got the pictures to prove it. Let's go to our PCS Phosphate second half highlights. Pirates with the football to uh, begin the second half, and uh, the drive stalls on a fourth and seven. Bays comes in to punt it away again, Steve, but uh, Moss uh, returns this one 32 yards. Jeff, if there was a point in the game where I just didn't feel good about things, it was right now because we were supposed to take that football and go do something with it opening the second half, and then we punt it, and then we don't get coverage, and things just don't look good right now. But again, the Pirate defense uh, does a great job as they keep uh, Miami out of the end zone. Crossland has to come in and kick the field goal. 
Well, that, here again, you know, it was a great job by the defense, just keep making them kick field goals, and if we do that, then, uh, you know, maybe we got a chance to climb back in this thing. 23 to three, and this is about the time the Pirates start to climb back in at about midway in the third period, and we see David uh, rush here for 12 yards. Well, David gets uncorked a little bit on some on some option work. He's uh, He scrambles. He ended the night with about 30 yards total rushing, but uh, I'll tell you, he's, he really starts uh, orchestrating the passing game, you'll see, as we get, get rolling here. And here's DeLeo Dodd again for a 24-yard catch. Big catch and run right there, and all of a sudden, we're starting to loosen things up on the other side of the ball. And now this is a great run by Jamie Wilson for the touchdown. Well, this is our little draw play that hits out the back door, and I think we're going to score on it again later, but it's been a good football play for us for years and years, and it, Jamie's got a good knack at it. Miami 23, Pirates 10. You can feel the momentum now swinging over to East Carolina as we see Miami come back. And uh, this guy, Kenny Kelly, Steve, as you talked about, uh, chased him all over the stadium. A big run here for 31 yards. We chased him and chased him and chased him. I don't I may, We may have sacked him once or twice, but uh, I'll tell you, he's a great athlete. But then Crossland comes in, attempts the field goal, and a big block here by your special teams. Well, that was just as big as it could get to, to take, you know, no points come out of that drive. And all of a sudden now, the, the momentum shifted, the stadium was rocking, the fans got into it, and you're going to see what happens from now on. Leonard Henry comes in and rushes for 13 yards. I was glad to see Leonard starting to break loose. He's going to have to step up and start helping us, and uh, I was glad to see that. And here's DeLeo Dodd, the young man from Winston-Salem, with another big catch. Well, here again, you know, DeLeo, I really think you said it best. I think he's growing up. Uh, he's got to learn to look the ball in, and once he catches the football, I'm telling you, he's fast as anybody on the field. And then Kevin Miller attempts the field goal, and this one goes wide right. Uh, uh, we kicked one, and then they, we had an illegal procedure. We had to kick it again, and it was you know, really uncharacteristic for Kevin to miss a field goal like that. Yeah, it took three points off the board as uh, Miami now uh, comes back, and they get Jackson into the ball game. Uh, he didn't play in the first half, had a gimpy ankle, but their outstanding back comes in here. But Steve, you do a great job. You can see the defense now really coming to life. Well, Coach Rose made an adjustment at halftime. He slowed the safeties down behind the zone dive and started picking up the cutback play. And, and, you know, we got to where we could stop that play. And that was a big key to the second half. And then Kenny Kelly, the outstanding Miami quarterback, is sacked here. Eric Hines uh, caught him from behind. That was a great play. Well, that was a nickel blitz. Eric Hines, our nickel, ba nickel back, and he came off the edge and made a big play for us. End of the third quarter, 23 to 10. Miami with the lead, but you can tell the Pirates are right back in it. As we begin the fourth period, Steve, uh, David Garrard with a pass uh, complete to Lamont Chapel. Well, we were spreading the field now, putting David in the shotgun and throwing the football, giving David a full field read, and he's finding open receivers now. Jamie Wilson with an 11-yard rush, and then Keith Stokes uh, picks up 10. Keith, uh, Keith was a real big factor in this game. He was doing a good job on special teams, and he's tough to bring down. Here's Jamie Wilson now with his Second touchdown run, this one for 18 yards. Same play. He happened to hit this one on the front side and then cut back against the defense. And, uh, hey, it's 23-17. we got a lot of time left. We can go win a football game. No doubt about it. As Miami comes back out offensively, and uh, Kenny Kelly now with a pass incomplete. Steve, we can see that uh, you're getting a lot of pressure on this guy. He's not operating like he was in the first half. Well, as, if you can get some pressure on this guy, I don't think he's what you'd call a great passer. He's a great athlete, but uh, with some pressure, he's not going to throw a real accurate ball, and that's what you're going to st see start happening. On fourth down and three, forces the punt, and Keith Stokes with a 24-yard return, and this was a big one. Well, it was big because, it, again, the stadium's enthusiastic. Everybody's interested. We, we got a chance to go put some more points on the board now. Rashawn Burns seems to play his best in the fourth quarter. David Garrard hits him here for a 20-yard pickup. I'll tell you, Rashawn's got to be one of the fastest tight ends in the nation. He took that ball. I thought he was going to score there. And David comes back, hits Arnie Powell for a six-yard gain here. Great uh, job on the check game by David. He checked out of one play to another, uh, took the easy throw, and gets some yardage. Fourth and six from the 21, Kevin Miller with the field goal, and it's good from 39 yards. Big field goal right there. We had to have that, so now we know that if we can just find a way to get a touchdown, we're going to win this football game. 23-20, the Pirates are right back in it. And here's a young man, Steve, that played great for you. Antoine Yelverton makes a big stop here on Jackson. Well, listen, Antoine Yelverton was playing because we had two outside linebackers that didn't play in this game, Kevin Ward and John Williamson, our two starters. Kevin, or Antoine Yelverton was actually our third team defensive end, made some great plays, had one of the biggest hits in the game, if you recall, yep. and uh, played a great game for us. David Garrard now back offensively for the Pirates as they force the punt. And uh, Chapel here with an eight-yard catch. It's another one of Lamont's eight catches, and you can see we're getting real, really getting some rhythm now. David rushes for four yards, and then uh, David completes this pass uh, to Jamie Wilson for 13 out of the backfield. Find Jamie out coming out of the backfield on the weak side flat, and Jamie takes it up the boundary for another big game. And another two-yard pickup 
to Jamie Wilson as uh, the Pirates continue to knock on the door. And then this was just a great play made by Keith Stokes as he takes it into the end zone. Well, this was uh, it was a five wide receiver play. We're getting everybody out. Uh, it was a blitz. David found the open man. Great throw. Great catch. Great run after the catch. And uh, guess what? We're on top. Pirates are up 27 to 23. And uh, still time in this ballgame for Miami to come back on a fourth and one. This is a big play as uh, Portis uh, rushes for three yards, and it gives them new life here. I'm going to tell you what. I think Coach Rose sent everybody in the kitchen sink trying to stop that thing, and the kid made a great run. So they got a first down. I think they're going to run about uh, 10 or 12 plays here, Jeff, all the way down to all the way to fourth down, and we're going to finally finally hold them. Yeah, it's a, they get it down to the 17-yard line on a first and 10. And then, Steve, uh, we talked about it. Uh, they miss fire on four consecutive passes here and you finally get the ball back well coach rose made a statement early in the week he said that we want to keep this guy in the pocket because if we can keep him in the pocket and make him throw from there i don't think he can hurt us and there it was right there four straight throws in the pocket couldn't complete them and the pirates take over the football and uh, kneel down and run the clock out and it's an east carolina victory on the pcs phosphate highlights the final east carolina 27 and miami 23. stay tuned we'll be back with more on the steve logan show right after this timeout well, when you have a game like this, emotion plays such a big, big part in it. It was a very emotional post game for the Pirates, and uh, they kind of let it all hang out. And let's get this reaction. How big is this win? It's a big win because <clears throat> it gets us a lot of respect. You know, a lot of people came out, they didn't believe in us, but we came out second half and showed everybody that we're a tough competitor and came out and won the game. How's it feel to be 4 0. It feels real good, baby. Righteous. It, it, this was unbelievable. We didn't know if we'd get 20,000 fans, and then, you know, we got to the mall yesterday, and everybody said, "Oh, we're going to be there. There's going to be a great crowd." And I tell you what, this was unbelievable. This this was a crowd. Half of this win was a crowd. They were unbelievable. Well, for the Pirates, it is on to West Point as East Carolina will take on Army. Steve, there have been two dogfights the uh, last two times the Pirates have played Army, and uh, I guess you got to expect that again this week. It, it'll be that way again. There's no reason to think it won't be. Their offense dictates that the game is going to be close. And uh, if they don't turn the football over, it's going to be a close football game because it's going to be a short game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you the, the most important thing when you play a wishbone football team, I'll tell the football players this tomorrow, you've got to get off to a fast start. We will not have the luxury to go out and, and fiddle around, right. and feel our way around. We've got to go put points on the board because if a wishbone gets up on you 14 points, the game will be over and yeah. you won't have any opportunities. Exactly. So many great news, so many great stories coming out of the ball game, but Steve, uh, the one negative, the injury situation. What we, can you tell we, us about Listen, that? we lost four uh, really good football players. Uh, Mark Yellick will be done for the season with a broken leg. Christian Gilliam, uh, just tragic. He tore his ACL, MCL. They're going to be a total reconstruction. He'll be lost for the season. Devon Claybrooks and Phoenix Evans both have a, what they call a grade two MCL, which is the in, inside ligament of the knee. It's not torn, it's stretched. Those two young men, anywhere from two to four weeks. So. Uh, there was a lot of devastation out there, and uh, we now are going to ask and seek uh, young men who's going to step up. If we're any good, mm -hmm. somebody's got to step up. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do. Well, it was an incredible night. There's no question about that. Steve, as we wrap up the show, is there anything special you'd like to say to the people of Eastern North Carolina, the Pirate fans who were there? Well, I, I, again, it was the most humbling uh, overwhelming emotion for me, our players, to walk out into that stadium. I, no, I don't know if anybody knew what was going to happen as far as who was showing up to watch the game. Right. But to see the stadium overflowing, um, I was joking with one of the reporters, it would have been a great time for somebody to come back and rob everybody, every house in Greenville because <laughs> there couldn't have been anyone left in Greenville. But uh, that's why I coach at East Carolina. I think that East Carolina football really is the vehicle to represent Eastern North Carolina, and Lord knows we've been through it, and we're, we're still going to go through some, there's some people out there that have lost lives, uh, loved ones, and, uh, you know, I just want everybody to know that our, our hearts and feelings, we, we've had a little bit of hardship on the football team, but nothing compared to what's going on out there, and we just want to wish everybody uh, just, just stay in there, and I think the, the very best of people will come out in mm -hmm. the coming month. There's no doubt about that. We've already seen it. Steve, congratulations. Uh, I don't know how to put it into words. You guys just uh, made everybody proud, and uh, we're so proud of the effort. Well, I, I was happy for the players, happy for the fans. This is a good, good, good moment for the Pirates. No doubt about it. Uh, a moment that we'll always remember, there's no question. Well, we'll be back next week on the Steve Logan Show with our report with the Army game. Have a good week, everybody. The Steve Logan Show, an inside look at pirate football, has been brought to you by Sprint. 
BB&T, Coeco Office Systems, Pepsi, Trademark, PCS Phosphate, McDonald's, Bill Clark Homes, United States Cellular, Winn-Dixie, Chrysler Plymouth, Jeep Eagle, SNK Menswear, Wachovia, the Hilton Inn of Greenville, and by Multimedia Cable Vision. Friday, October 1st, 1999. Tonight on Newsstand. One community devastated by floods finds hope in a very unlikely place. Your house is underwater. Water, yeah, and we went to my mom-in-law's and we still watch the game. CNN Newsstand with anchor Stephen Frazier and Carol Lynn. Good evening, welcome to Carolina. Are holding their heads high this week thanks to the heroics of the Eastern Carolina University football team, which had to move the biggest game of the season to higher ground and in the process lifted its game to a higher plane. Bruce Burkhardt teamed up with CNN Sports Illustrated to explain what happened. It would have been an uphill battle, even under the best of circumstances. But now, the Pirates of East Carolina University, already battered by the raging waters of Hurricane Floyd, were on the verge of getting smacked by another hurricane. Reggie Wayne for a Miami touchdown. The Miami Hurricanes, the ninth-ranked team in the country in a perennial football power. Underdogs already, East Carolina, a university of 18,000, couldn't even play the game in its home stadium as originally scheduled. Because of the devastation back home in Greenville, the game had to be moved 80 miles to the west, to the home field of their arch rival, North Carolina State in Raleigh. Miami up 16 nothing now. If things were going badly over in Raleigh, it was nothing compared to the problems back home here in Greenville. Still, many of the 47,000 who would have filled this stadium last Saturday night weren't at home mopping up raw sewage or filling out FEMA forms. They were in Raleigh. We could just hear the crowd cheering, and it was, it was, it was, it was just hitting everybody in the locker room. They were like, do you hear that? Do you hear that? That's for y'all. They're, they're cheering for y'all. It, it was something spiritual. I mean, it just, it was amazing. It was, it was like a power was over the stadium. It was, it was the loudest stadium I've ever heard. If anybody could have used a little diversion, it was the people of eastern North Carolina. 15 inches of rain in 12 hours. 48 people killed statewide. Thousands left without a place to live, including some 2,500 students at the university. You, you have to have that mask on? Yeah, sure do. Why is it that, it's that bad? It's very mildewy. Mildewy? Yeah, mildewy and, and just, just totally nasty. And over at Denny's, Marjorie Wilson wears a helicopter pen, a reminder of the one that rescued her from her house, which has since been condemned. No, no, we had to watch it. We had to watch it. It was 6 o'clock. We were like, OK, got to watch the game. Your house is underwater. The water, yeah. And we went to my mom-in-law's, and we still watched the game. OK. But not all felt the same as Marjorie. Given all the tragedy and all the work that needed to be done, there was talk that this was no time to be playing a football game. In fact, it was the talk of the town on Henry Hinton's call-in radio show who heard that sentiment from even the most diehard of fans. I remember the emotion in his voice. He was so, uh, so uh, kind of shaken by what was going on around him that he's like, I, look, no, no one loves East Carolina football more than me but it's just not right to play this game right now. I mean, he, he, he meant that from the bottom of his heart. And concentrating on a football game was not easy for the players either. Stranded in a hotel in Columbia, South Carolina, where they had played the Saturday before, the floods prevented them from returning home. They were left to watch and worry. One day uh, during that week, we got the USA Today, and on the front of the USA Today is, is Wyndham Circle, where Travis Mazik and Ernie Powell and Kevin Ward stay, and, you know, all the apartments are underwater, and it's just like a crushing blow. I'm real anxious to get over there and see if I can just save anything of, of value, a uh, sentimental value. Mm. It was only just this week that defensive back Travis Mazik finally got home to check out the damage. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's my picture. 
What do you mean? That's your mom? Yeah, that's my mom and me, so. But for Travis, the other players, and all those who watched or listened on that Saturday night, overcoming adversity wasn't a cliche. It was the only thing left to believe in. I mean, we were down 20 to zip, and they were screaming like we were up 20 to zip. They just had a, uh, some uh, energy about them that was different. Down 20 points to one of the best teams in the country, the odds of a comeback were about the same as the Tar River drying up overnight. And then it happened. The East Carolina Pirates rallied to score the last 24 points of the game. What an incredible comeback by the East Carolina Pirates. I've had people come up to me and just tears in their eyes and just break down crying saying thank you because it gave them a relief to, to get away from what's going on here. We cried, you know, for our loss. We cried, and then with the game, we cheered up. And we're doing better, and we're coping every day. I got a letter today. I lost it all, but what you did uh, Saturday was uh, restored my hope and faith. And I just think they picked up the whole region and, and put all of us on their backs and, uh, and, and showed us, you know, that you can overcome adversity. For our team to come back and compete the way that they did this last uh, Saturday night, somebody needs to get in here and make a movie out of this. Maybe somebody will, but before that happens, East Carolina has to play out the rest of its schedule. First, Army, that game is this weekend up at West Point.